Did you know that the plastic bottles that you put into the recycling bin at your curb might actually come back to your house? How? As carpet. Well, today I'm at Mohawk Industries in Somerville, Georgia, and we're going to show you how they take recycled plastic and turn it into carpet that you can buy for your house. Turning recycled plastic bottles into carpet is no simple task. Well, I'm with Phil Cavan, who's responsible for buying all the plastic that you turn into carpet. Phil, how many bottles do you buy a week? See, we buy about 50 million bottles a week, which equal about one third of the bottles collected in the United States today. That is a lot of bottles. What happens to these bottles after you bring them in? Well, we bring them in in large bales so we can get the weights on the trucks. And then they go through a trommel that breaks the bales apart so we can get the bottles in single file. That's that big circular drum? Yes. Then it goes through these color sorters and plastic type sorters, so we have to pull those bottles out that are not the polyester bottles in the bale. So you can't just use any old bottle here? That's right. Only polyester bottles is the number one bottle that you'll find. Let's say on the that bottle. triangle on the bottom yes. of the bottle. Now, why do you sort by color? Well, the clear bottles go into all colors of the fiber, and then the green bottles can only go into the darker shades. For carpet? Yes. Okay. Now, what we have here is some of the product after it's been chipped up. Uh, what happens to it after this? We grind it up after the contaminants have been removed from the flake. Then we take all these different things out, the label, and we put it into our wash system. And when we're through washing the flake, then it is very beautiful, clean polyester flake. And then from here it goes where? It goes into the extruders where it's melted down, and that's where the fiber process takes place. That's where you actually make the yarn to make the carpet out of. That's right. Jerome Cribbins, the plant manager, is going to tell us what happens next. See what happens next, we take the flake from the wash area and dry it, then we melt it and pump it through small holes to form the fine fiber. And that's what this fiber is right here that's coming out of this spinneret. It's actually uh, being kind of extruded through here, I guess. And then it actually looks like this, which is a very small fiber. Yes. What we, we take it from here and we draw it to give it strength, we crimp it to give it bulk, and then we cut it. Why polyester fiber? Polyester is a very strong fiber and it's actually used in tires, and seat belts, and things like that. It requires strength, so it's very strong and durable. It also can be dyed into lustrous and bright colors. It's resistant to fade and resistant to stain, which is very important to the consumer. Jerome, we've seen the fiber being made in that fiber machine, and then we've seen the fiber go into bales, but how do you turn the fiber into this? Steve, our bales are shipped to yarn spinning mills, and what they do there is they, they open up the bales, and they run it through a spinning, twisting, and heat set setting process, and wind it up on tubes as you have in your hand here. Now what we're looking at here is a carpet making machine, right? That's correct. We have a carpet making machine, we call it a tufting machine. We have like 1,400 of these spools of yarn in this machine. There's 1,400 needles as you see there tufting the carpet, and the, the yarn is fed through the needle, punched through the backing, and then it's cut. And that's why we call it cut pile carpet. Now, how many recycled plastic bottles does it take just to make a square foot of uh, carpet? For this particular carpet, I'd say it's about three bottles per square foot. And then what happens after here? From this, it goes to a dye bath where we put the selected color into the carpet, then it's dried, and then it goes to a finishing line where we put the backing on. Drone, as with any carpet, you got to check for quality control, and polyester carpet's no different. What are these ladies doing here? Well, Steve, what the ladies are doing here, this is our final inspection uh, line uh, for our carpet, and they're looking for any visible defect. Well, they cut it out, and then Certainly. we all know they end up it's with a good product. Yes. Drone, there are a lot of things you do for quality control and testing. What are these people doing behind us? This test, Steve, uh, checks the effect of foot traffic on our carpet and it's called the foot traffic test, basically. And they do 20,000 foot traffic loops around the carpet, and that simulates the foot traffic of a family of four for one year. 20,000? 20, 20,000 steps. footsteps. So in addition, you do some strength testing as well? Yes, we do. Uh, one such test uh, tests the strength of the backing of the carpet, and we actually pull on the carpet from every direction to see when it breaks. The minimum test on that is 100 pounds, and our carpet generally runs about 200 pounds. And the reason you do that is because when the carpet installers install it, they're stretching the carpet, you want to make sure it doesn't pull apart. Absolutely, and you want it to lay good and flat on the floor without stress. Now you do a pull test as well to see how easy it is for the nap to pull out of the carpet? Absolutely, and that's called the tough bind test, and we see how much stress it takes to pull the tuft out of the bind, and that has to meet the minimum test also. You don't want a sweeper to come along and pick Absolutely. one of those pieces up and wind it up. You want to stay there, yeah. correct. Yeah. Uh, a fire test, you do a fire test as well? Yeah, we do a number of flammability tests. Uh, one is called the, the radiant heat flammability test, and we actually put a flame on the carpet, 
and it has radiant heat, and we measure the distance that it burns through the carpet, and it can't go, but so far there's a minimum standard on that. We obviously have to do this. We want our carpet's flame retardant, and we have to check to make sure it meets our specs. Products like polyester carpet made from recycled soda bottles are only possible because people take the time to recycle. But did you know that 75% of all the soda bottles that we use end up in landfills? So recycle, because you never know when products like these that you set out on your curb just might find their way back to add value to your new house.